Hi, I'm Lou. In this episode, I'm going to be covering debugging C++ ROS nodes using the Visual Studio Code ROS extension. I'm going to be covering opening Visual Studio Code from a ROS workspace, setting up some C++ properties, creating a debug profile, launching that debug session, and then I'll also touch on debugging multiple C++ ROS nodes. So let's get started. We're going to start off in our terminal, and this um, can be on Linux or Windows. Uh, in this case, I'm on Windows using the Microsoft terminal. I'm going to CD into my ROS workspace, and then I'm going to start code using the command line install and the period. This says opens, open Visual Studio Code rooted in this directory. This directory has a source file, a source directory in it that contains the packages that I'm going to be debugging. So now we're in Visual Studio Code. You can see that we have the ROS extension installed, and it has detected that it is ROS2 Foxy. We're not currently running a uh, ROS2 daemon, so we can go ahead and start that by pressing Control shift p and then do ROS start. This will launch the ROS daemon in the background so that Visual Studio can connect to it for uh, debugging purposes. Now, once we've started that, we now need to do a couple of things. First, we're going to update the C++ properties, which will change the, the properties in this Visual Studio Code directory, including all of the uh, ROS paths in your local in, uh, install, as well as the workspace paths. There's also settings.json here. And this has been initialized with ROS.distro set to Foxy. If you need a different set of environment variables that are started, or if you're doing workspace overlays, you can actually use a new feature, which is to set ROS.setup script, and you pass the full path to the setup script that you want. On Windows, it supports batch files and command prompts, or command files. Uh, on Linux, it supports bash scripts uh, before starting. But since Foxy is installed in the default location that Visual Studio is looking for, I don't have to specify that. Now, we're gonna, gonna go ahead and create a launch file, which tells Visual Studio Code how to actually launch our, our ROS nodes. I'm not going to have any files open, uh, and I'll show you why here in a second. If we go to the Run and Debug tab and click Create a, a launch.json file, you'll see that if nothing is selected, ROS is available for debugging. However, if you do select a C++ file and create a launch.json, only C++ items or uh, specific ones that VS Code knows about are selected. So let's go ahead and close that file and create a launch.json file selecting ROS. Now we are using a launch file, so we wanna do a ROS launch style debugging. And I'm gonna select the package that contains the launch files I'm interested in. And that's in the AI bot um, repo. It's a very basic um, launch file that says, turn a robot to face a human. And we'll talk about that and how that's set up in a minute. So for this, I'm actually going to use the uh, follow me launch file. What this does is it creates a launch.json file with the target of the full path of the launch file that I wanted to launch. It sets up a filter that says, if you see any of these ROS nodes, rviz, gz, gz client, gz server, just launch them, don't attach a debugger. You can add to this if you have fairly large launch files. Now, what I like to do is I like to carve up my projects so that launch uh, the, a large project has very small launch files. Uh, and for debugging purposes, the launch files tend to I would collect subsystems together, things that work together and I want to debug together. Uh, and those are in, uh, integrated into larger launch files. 
So that's just a tip on how to set up your launch system such that you can debug smaller portions of the overall composition. The type of launch is ROS, and you can see that at the bottom of the, uh, in the status bar of VS Code, our launch configuration is set to ROS, so this is what will be selected. Now, if we go ahead and open that uh, main.cpp, we can set a breakpoint by going into the gutter over here next to the line we want to step, uh, set a breakpoint on and press uh, the mouse button that sets a breakpoint. Then we can go back and select the start debugging option. What this does is it'll launch the C++ debugger and launch your ROS node. And we can step through it. F10, or you can press the continue, uh, step over, will allow you to step through your ROS nodes. And you can also set breakpoints in things like the pub sub callback. To demonstrate debugging multiple C++ ROS nodes, I'm setting up a scenario. I have a SparkFun jet bot, which has a RealSense camera connected to it. I'm running ROS2 in a container, which I'll demonstrate in another video, and it's publishing camera frames. And I'll use that to process for, the, for debugging this, the multiple nodes. On my host computer, on my Windows machine, I have an Onyx runtime ROS node, the Microsoft Onyx runtime ROS node, which is configured with a YOLO V2 model. This will consume the camera frames off the JetBot, use hardware acceleration on my desktop to actually process those images. It will then publish a visualization marker that you can use for various different scenarios. In this case, I have a demo node which consumes that and turns a robot to point to the person. To the launch file, I've added the Onyx Runtime ROS node and configured it to consume from that RealSense camera topic. This will publish the interactive marker or the, uh, the visualization marker that the AI bot node is going to consume from. Because it's, these are both in the same launch file, the, RON, the ROS extension is going to launch two different C++ debuggers and attach to each of those ROS nodes. This will show up a little interesting, so I want to demonstrate this. So go ahead and press play. And what you'll notice is a couple of different things happened. So the first thing is, is that in the call stack, you'll see that we have two different running processes. And we also have a context selector right next to the debug toolbar. I'm going to set a, a break. I'm going to have a breakpoint in the YOLO processor that will fire when it actually detects somebody. When that does publish a message, like just happened, it will publish a marker that is picked up by the AI bot. So we'll put a breakpoint there. Press play. Okay. So you see that the Onyx Runtime ROS node detected a person and published a message out to the marker callback. Now let's see if we can get it to trigger again. Okay, so now we switched, we hit the breakpoint on the publish. I'm going to press play, but it didn't switch immediately. There's a couple reasons for this. The first is, is that ROS is actually batching some of these messages, so they're not getting pushed all the way out to the other process. The other is, is that Visual Studio Code can try and detect what the active debugger is and not switch contexts away from you. So you can see here, it actually did hit the breakpoint, but Visual Studio Code didn't switch it over. So let's go ahead and turn that breakpoint off and press play. And you can see that we are hitting that. Now, when it comes time to stop debugging, you're going to press the stop button, but you have to do it for each process that's running. So the first time I stop, you'll see that it stopped the AI bot, and now this one will stop the Onyx executable. 
So this is demonstrating debugging multiple C++ ROS nodes running concurrently on one system, consuming the output from a, another system. 